Good morning, everybody. We're so glad that you've tuned in to our worship service. My name is Sam. I am the modern worship leader at the church. I'm coming to you from my home because we're trying to abide by the mayor's stay at home order. So we're trying to keep everybody healthy and everyone safe. So our service will look a little bit different. We have pre-recorded um, everything and put it together for you. So, but we're all going to be watching this virtually together. Our staff will be in the comments um, and engaging and connecting with you. So let me pray for us and we'll get this thing kicked off. Father God, we are just so grateful that we have this opportunity to connect virtually together as a church. And God, we know the church isn't just confined to the building, that you have called us to be the church. So God, open uh, our hearts to being able to invite you in and change our lives, change our homes, so that we might be able to be your hands and feet and be the church you've called us to be. God, move in this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to worship at Isle of Hope United Methodist Church. Uh, I'm glad that you have joined in with us today uh, to hear uh, encouragement from God's Word. Can we talk about prayer? Uh, prayer has been our theme this entire uh, season of March, the beginning of the season of Lent, and, and what a season it has been, hasn't it? Uh, we were together in worship for two Sundays and now already scattered uh, in different places for two Sundays, uh, but I am encouraged day by day at the reports of how we are learning again to be the church, uh, even while we cannot be together at the church. Uh, so continue to press into one another, press into God's goodness and his grace, uh, love each other well. Uh, and if you are among those who need help, uh, if you need a place, uh, a helping hand, if you need someone to help you get through these seasons, reach out, uh, reach out to folks here in our congregation. You can reach out through our webpage uh, or call the main church phone number and uh, someone will get back to you and we'll connect uh, you to the means of grace, the means of help uh, that you need right now. Can we talk about prayer? Uh, in this season, we've approached prayer uh, in several different ways. We've talked about uh, pause. We've talked about start with stop. If we want to connect with God in prayer, uh, it begins when we stop, when we start with stop and realize it takes a pause from the distraction of life to focus uh, our attention and our hearts and our wills uh, on a conversation with God. Uh, we talked about rejoicing, uh, learning to celebrate every good thing that God has done and to look closely for evidence of God's goodness. When we talked about rejoicing, we said to change our prayers, we change our perspective and we learn to see things uh, in a new light. Uh, we talked about what it means to ask, pause, rejoice, and then ask, to ask boldly, to ask big things of God. Uh, Jesus teaches us to pray for our daily bread, to acknowledge what we need for today and what others need. And so we commit to asking uh, in, in prayer before God. Last week, we took a, a, a kind of a hiatus and looked at what it means to experience unanswered prayers. And today we come back and finish up this season of studying about prayer, talking about prayer uh, with the final step, yield or yes. Pause, rejoice, ask, and yield to say yes to God. To say yes to God is at the heart of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we'll look again at Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus is teaching us uh, in the Sermon on the Mount about prayer. In Matthew 6, he says, this then is how you should pray. And the words maybe are familiar to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have, who, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's pause right there and pray together. Uh, Father, we cannot live by bread alone. We live by every word which comes to us from your mouth. Uh, open today our ears, our minds, and our hearts that we could receive and live in your living word, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You hear it there in the heart of the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done. Uh, that's a yes, isn't it? Your will be done. Uh, and, and the Lord's Prayer is not the only place we see that in the Bible. We see it in, in the Gethsemane prayer. Jesus, in the last uh, days, in the last moments of his life, he's gathered his disciples uh, for one last passionate time of prayer in the garden. And Jesus' words recorded for us, Mark 14, 36, uh, has it this way, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus shows us experientially what's it, what it's like to pray through and get to yes, get to that place of yielding, that place of obedience. Uh, but friends, the yes of the cross, uh, the yes of that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, the yes of the Lord's Prayer, none of those yeses would be possible uh, apart from another yes, uh, a very human yes, the yes of a young woman who was really no different from thousands of other young women in a, in a, a Middle Eastern dusty town, like hundreds of other dusty Middle Eastern towns. The yes I'm talking about is the yes of Mary of, of Nazareth. Maybe you know the story. Luke chapter 1 uh, tells the story of an angel who comes to visit uh, this young woman, Mary of Nazareth, uh, with an astounding invitation 
an announcement that she has found favor with God and that God is to do something unique, uh, something unrepeatable in the history of the world that through Mary's yes, God is going to come in human form, that Jesus will come and save us all from our sins. And it's Mary's answer. It's Mary's yes that embodies for us the possibility of all of our yeses, all of our yieldings, because it's Mary's yes that brings the gospel into the world, that brings Jesus into the world. So when we, uh, so when we pray and when we talk about yes, we know that it is possible. It is possible from Mary's life. We know it is possible for us to respond to God with a yes. Mary was curious. She leaned in to uh, converse with the angel to find out what God had for her. And in that way is a, a remarkable uh, exemplar of the way that we yield and the way we learn and listen our way to yes. We learn and we listen. Isn't that the way we move from, uh, from, from where we are to hearing God as we listen to the scripture, as we listen to the spirit of Jesus Christ? Almost everything we learn in life, we learn by listening. Uh, we, we know from science that, uh, that infants in the womb, that they, uh, that they know the voices of their parents and their siblings. Why? Because over many months, uh, they have listened to those voices and those voices have brought them comfort and, cur and courage. And so as they're born, they already know these voices and they feel peace. They feel settled when they're with these voices that they've already listened to, voices that they already know. Uh, when we are infants ourselves, we don't learn to speak by studying books. We learn by listening, don't we? We mimic the sounds that others make. Uh, I love a story I know about a, a fellow who moved to the United States from another country, immigrated uh, to New York City, uh, and his parents were confident that first summer before school started, his parents were confident that he was working on his English and picking up English from neighborhood kids. Uh, they were confident until school started, and the teachers told them, Noah, you live in a Puerto Rican neighborhood. So he had been uh, learning Spanish. His Spanish was improving, uh, but not so much his English. We listen and then we learn, and then we're called forward. We're called forward, aren't we, in obedience. In obedience by listening to the Spirit of Jesus Christ. By listening to the Scripture, the words recorded for us there. Jesus says this to his disciples and to us today. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. See how the pattern is laid for us from listening to yielding, to saying, yes, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. They don't simply hear my voice and wander off on their own, but they hear my voice and they obey me. They follow me. They say yes to me again and again and again. Uh, friends, we haven't talked a whole lot about the, uh, the details of prayer, the mechanics of prayer, uh, but I will tell you this, you shape your prayers, you decide uh, what words to use, uh, you decide the, the where and the when and how you'll approach God. You shape your prayers, but then your prayers begin to shape you. You shape your prayers, but your prayers shape you. It's just like when you go to the gym. If you go to exercise, uh, you make the decisions, right, about how you're going to approach that day's training, whether it's uh, shoulder day or whether it's leg day. Uh, you'll make the decision about whether you're going to increase the weight and, and so build your, your sort of raw strength or, or if you'll increase the, the reps, the repetitions, uh, and build up your endurance. You shape your exercise and then your exercise shapes you, right? Uh, so whether you're at the gym or a runner or whatever kind of uh, exercise and physical fitness is, is yours, you shape your routine, you shape your exercise, and then your exercise shapes you. Uh, I want you to know this. You shape your prayers. You decide uh, how and when and where, but then your prayers shape you. Your prayers, more specifically, your prayers give God access to your life, access to your heart and to your, uh, to your actions so that your prayers then truly shape you. They shape your future. They shape your ability to say yes to God. Now, we know a yes. Uh, we might not know how to get to yes ourselves, but we know a yes when we see it. 
uh, this story out of Bergamo, Italy, uh, one of the regions uh, uh, most tragically shaped by this uh, COVID-19 virus. The story of Giuseppe Berardelli, uh, a pastor there, 72 years of age, uh, offered a ventilator after his diagnosis with COVID-19, but he refused he refused the ventilator and said, this can be used for someone uh, healthier than I am, somebody with a better chance of recovery. What kind of yes is that? I imagine that a, a yes like that, a yielding like that, that's not the first time that Pastor Berardelli ever said yes uh, to self-giving, yes to loving his neighbor as himself. Those kind of yeses build up over time. His prayers shaped him. He shaped his prayers and then his prayers shaped him and he was able to move toward that sort of gracious yes. Now I'm not saying that that kind of yes uh, is the yes that everyone has to say, but it's an example, isn't it, of how our encounter with God uh, draws us simply from asking uh, for ourselves to yielding fully, yielding fully to the good of another, yielding fully to the will of God. Anthony of Egypt, a, a desert monk, said this about the prayer that takes us to the point of yes. He said, prayer, perfect prayer is not to know that you are praying. Perfect prayer is not to know that you are praying. That is the prayer of yes. Uh, that kind of prayer, it, it reminds us maybe of our experience in the theater. If you've ever gone to, uh, to see a movie, whether in the theater or whether you've watched a movie at home, uh, you know that you pass through uh, several stages when you're uh, thinking about a good movie. At, at, the first, at first, you know you're watching a movie, right? Uh, you know there's popcorn and there's snacks and people around you and you have to reach over and shush somebody or turn the volume up, adjust the light so it's just right. That's stage one. Stage two... You begin to connect, don't you, with a movie. You connect with a character or with the great themes, the engaging visuals there on the screen. But you've had this experience maybe only a few times in your life where you're so captivated. You're so captivated by a, a character or so captivated uh, by the story or the lessons being taught that, that, that the veil almost separates and, and you and the movie are one. And, and, and when it ends, you're sort of jolted back into reality. That's only happened a few times for me uh, watching film, but I, but I tell you this, that is the way of yes with prayer. First, we begin, first we begin knowing that we have our prayer list and we have our scripture and our plans for our devotional. And then we come close to God and we know that we're enjoying his presence. We know that we're enjoying a conversation with them. And then at some point, at some point, and this is the great yes of a life of prayer, to know that we are simply with God and God is with us and the veil seems almost completely broken. We are there in the presence of God. That, friends, that is the invitation to the life of yes in prayer. It, it's a long journey toward yes. We don't get to yes immediately and every day. The long journey toward yes sometimes takes us down the path of confession because as we draw close to God, as we say yes to him again and again, we're aware that there are more and more places where we've said no to him. And we come to this place of confession. It's a good thing Jesus mentions that in the Lord's Prayer as well. Forgive us as we forgive those who have hurt us. Forgiveness is an essential part of the approach to yes, of yielding to God. And don't think that confession keeps you away from God. Confession draws you toward him. In his book, How to Pray, Pete Gregg says it this way. You can't be too bad or too broken or even too boring for God's love to break in and come near you in forgiveness, in confession, and draw you to God's power. Gregg does... Uh, Tell us this, he says, you can be though, you can't be too bad or too broken, but you can be too proud. You can be too proud to acknowledge how desperately you need God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's restoration of mercy and hope. Yes to God, we can say yes to God in every season and every one of us can say yes to God because God has in Jesus Christ said yes to us. Friends, that's the heart of the gospel. 
that in Jesus Christ, in his perfect life, in his death and his resurrection, God has said a yes over us, inviting us to say yes in return to him. I tell you, astronomy is a great gift to the world. It's an amazing thing uh, to look in the sky and, and, and know the stars and the constellations and some of the, uh, the explanations behind that. I have an app on my phone that I can hold up and it'll tell me the names of constellations I've long ago forgotten and uh, where the planets are visible in the night sky today. Uh, astronomy is a great thing, but stargazing... Stargazing, actually just looking at and enjoying the stars, that's something altogether different. Uh, to get an old quilt or a blanket, uh, to lay it out on the grass and, and lay down and just soak in the vastness of the universe. To see the goodness of creation and to feel, to sort of feel wrapped up in something that's much larger than me and larger than you. That may even be better than astronomy. The yes in prayer, friends, we need to talk about prayer. We need to study about prayer and, 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 and read about prayer. But to pray, to pray is the real gift. To say yes to God, to yield to someone larger than you, someone whose greatness and whose goodness is beyond measure. That, friends, is the true gift. And to know that when we yield before God, we come to one whose goodness and whose greatness has been shown perfectly to us in Jesus Christ, I invite you. I invite you to say yes. Say yes to God through Jesus Christ. Say yes to God in prayer. Yield to him. As he says at the heart of the Lord's prayer, your will be done. Say yes to God. Say yes to God in prayer. Let's pray together now. Father, you have made a way for us. And so we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, there is no simpler prayer and there really is no more complicated prayer than to simply say, yes, Lord. Have your way, have your will. Draw us to, play, to a place where our heart is close to your heart, where we're able to trust you and love you completely, knowing that your love for us is enough because your love has been shown to us in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray together. Amen.